Okay, folks, MBS here. Look, today I'm going to be covering the uh, preheat and glow plug system in a uh, 1HZ diesel motor fitted into a Toyota Coaster bus. Uh, now, why are we doing that? Well, not in my case, but in your case, if you've got a hard starting engine, this is probably one of the things you should be looking at. It'll be in the uh, engine cranks but doesn't start section of the uh, workshop manual for the engine, uh, which is on my website that you can download. Uh, and that's the only reason you'd really want to be checking your glow plug circuit um, for a no start situation. Um, now, obviously, if your preheat system, which is separate to the glow plug, the glow plug is the dirty end of the uh, business. Uh, it's the bit that glows up and heats up the combustion chamber, but you need to have electrical power going to the glow plug. So we'll look at the preheat system and uh, get a, a sort of a rough idea of how it works. Uh, I won't go into the nitty gritty details because every car is different. Um, and this is a, a, a complex vehicle in the, in the coaster bus. Uh, Land Cruisers, um, the Hiluxes, uh, Forerunners, anything that's got the same uh, diesel injection system on it and most other diesels as well. They all have some sort of preheat system and a glow plug. Okay, so you could apply what I'm showing you here to almost any of them. Now, the purpose of it obviously, is, as I've said, is to heat up the combustion chamber. So if you're hard starting and it just cranks and cranks and cranks, but eventually starts, well, that's because you've probably built up enough heat in the combustion chamber just from turning over compressions. Uh, but if your glow plug actually isn't uh, working, um, yeah, it, it just takes forever. And sometimes in the colder weather, you'll never start it, never, ever. Um, so yeah, up here, uh, temperature's not bad. It's about a 24 degree day at the moment, mid morning. Uh, if you're down in Victoria or you're down in um, Argentina somewhere or up in North America and Canada, um, well, yeah, obviously in winter, you're gonna want a preheat system that works well um, so you can start your diesel. Okay, so that's the only reason the, the glow plug is in existence, is to start your diesel. And that's what it's there for. It's like an automatic choke, you could, you could almost say. Um, so if it's not operating, diesel don't go. Okay, so I could probably start this right now. If I disconnected the wire to my glow plugs, I could probably crank it over uh, 10 or 20 times and it'll, it'll start because of the ambient temperature that uh, we've got here already. Um, but I wouldn't have a hope down south. All right, so we're going to check um, using a couple of tools. Now, you will need a voltmeter, okay? What any digital uh, multimeter will do. And it needs to have resistance uh, circuit on it as well, so you can check the glow plug. And we've got a time light. You could use that as well. Um, I'm going to have these set up simultaneously, so you can have a look at the difference between them. Timing light is good for checking preheat system. Uh, but it's no good for checking the glow plug. Uh, you must have a, a, res a resistance uh, meter. Okay, um, so I'm going to reposition the camera down the engine bay. We'll have a look at it and uh, we'll see what this one's actually doing. It should be okay. It starts fine. Um, but if it isn't, um, I'm afraid I'm not going to go into the diagnosis of why you've got no electrical power. Maybe the, uh, the uh, engine manual I've got on my website might help you out in uh, tracing that fault, but you'll need a, a wiring diagram for a start and you'll need a little bit of knowledge on electrics to uh, get there um, because there could be a myriad, myriad of reasons uh, why you're not getting power to your glow plug. Okay, so uh, if you're getting power to your glow plug, of course, um, and it still doesn't start, well, you could go straight for glow plug itself. Okay, so we're, we're covering that. Uh, we'll, we'll test a glow plug um, in situ while it's still in the engine. Okay, so let's get into it and uh, see what this thing's doing. Okay, here's the system all hooked up. Uh, glow plugs down the line of the engine, injectors. Uh, the terminal at the back coming in to your number six uh, glow plug. Now I've got the voltmeter hooked up and I've also got the test light hooked up. What should happen is I'll turn the ignition on, the dash light will come on, I'll get voltage here, and I'll also get the light should come on. Uh, now the dash light will go out, and all that indicates to you is that you can now crank the engine over and it should start. 
the glow plugs will continue going because uh, the preheat system should still be working so let's have a look at that without starting it so I've turned it on my dash light's just gone out I've still got voltage at the glow plug as you can see all right uh, so you can see that continues on and uh, that'll continue on for some time so I'm going to start it now and we're going to see exactly how long this circuit uh, stays acti active for so ignition on you go glow system has deactivated and that's working pretty much the way I expected it to work um, light comes on the dash goes out you crank it over you start it the circuit keeps getting voltage uh, for however long that is I'll put that up on screen how long that took um, and then it uh, goes off um, that's a good preheat system now what we have to do is we actually uh, have to test the glow plug now itself. Preheat system is working well by the looks of it. Uh, so now uh, let's test the glow plug and I'll show you there's a, a little trick to this. It's not as uh, straightforward as you think. Okay, here's a schematic of the glow plug setup in a Toyota 1HZ engine. Six glow plugs obviously. Uh, now look, when you go to test them, you must remove this buzz bar, okay? The buzz bar going across the top that connects all the glow plugs together and you have to remove the electrical lead going in that bolts onto that last glow plug. Uh, and the reason for this is very simple. Resistance will take the easiest path. So when you're using your probes to check uh, the resistance of the uh, glow plug itself, uh, you will find that if you leave the buzz bar on, you'll get an incorrect reading. So for instance, I've made one here faulty. Uh, infinity resistance, open circuit, so uh, it's absolutely knackered. Um, if you were to test that um, while everything was still connected, except that lead maybe, you could take that off. So you put your earth on, you put your probe on the uh, glow plug, and you're reading one, three ohms or something, something like that. You're not testing that glow plug at all you're testing the one that's got the least resistance so it's going to go along the buzz bar and find the easiest path to earth okay so it could be that glow plug that you're actually testing not this one so you're not going to be able to pick that one up doesn't matter where you test it along here you won't pick that one up you'll pick up uh, one of least resistance along that buzz bar so for a minimum the buzz bar must be removed and the electrical wire removed that way you've got individual glow plugs and you can test them individually and get a correct reading. Now you don't have to move the earth all the time, you can just leave the earth there because uh, they all screw into the cylinder head so there's, uh, you've got a common earth. So you can just go from glow plug to glow plug and measure the resistance here and then you'll come across this one and it'll be faulty, um, it'll reach uh, overload on the uh, multimeter. All right, so the specification is here for a 24 volt Toyota and a 12 volt Toyota. Uh, now this is Hilux, Coaster, uh, all those uh, types of um, um, vehicle makes. Um, and that's it, folks. It's pretty easy. So uh, a little bit of work to take the buzz bar off. Now the buzz bar comes off sideways, so you don't have to take the nuts completely off. You can just loosen them and then draw the bar out sideways. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, putting it back together is a little bit more complicated. You may have to loosen the nuts off a little bit more to give you a bit of leeway. Um, but yeah, it's not a big problem. And you shouldn't have to take off the crossover uh, manifold to do this. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, now this is the same story for most glow plugs. Most glow plugs are connected by a buzz bar. So you've you, you really got to remove that. All right. Um, I think that's about all, all there is of testing. Let's get down there and do a quick test on that uh, last glow plug 
and uh, we'll show you uh, what reading this one is. Okay, here we go. Now, look, if you're going to use little leads like this to um, make the job easier for you, check them first. Make sure they're okay, all right? So uh, clamp them onto your own meter and check that they're reading close to zero. So that's crap. It's on mega ohms at the moment, so that's useless, that lead. Throw it away. So yeah, you've got to be careful of these leads. So uh, sometimes it's better just to bloody uh, put the earth probe on an earth, put that on your glow plug, and we should get Obviously, I have got a bad earth because it's still sitting on mega ohms, yeah? So, uh, this should change it now. And we are on 3.4, 3.3 ohms. And the specification is 3.1, yeah? So, uh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So, that glow plug is working well. Okay. Well, there you go. Piece of cake, isn't it? It's uh, not a hard job at all. Uh, now, you probably would have noticed in my other Tech Talks, uh, I think it was Tech Talk 15, where I was doing a uh, no-start situation. Engine cranks doesn't start. And uh, this was actually one of the items mentioned in that uh, article um, as a possible cause. So, yeah, so if your diesel is actually running, if you can get it running, pushing it downhill, whatever, um, cranking it over for a long time and it eventually starts um, This could be one of your problems the preheat systems not working because uh, the diesel should really just turn the key light comes on light goes out crank it and it should start straight away um, So yeah, so this is a good place to go looking if that doesn't happen for you if you've already ruled out uh, all other possibilities um, now to actually check the preheat system well it this test light or timing light, whatever you want to call it, um, is the easiest, obviously. Um, but if you, a voltmeter would be better, mainly because you can see the voltage. Um, so if you're doing it, in my case here, a 24 volt vehicle, I'm expecting to see somewhere around 23, 24 volts. And when the alternator kicks in and starts charging, I'll probably get a little bit more. Um, so what if I, for instance, got 15 volts, so then I'm, I'm looking at a serious voltage drop and that will affect the operation of the glow plug as well. Uh, so yeah, a voltmeter would be a better option. Uh, and then as you saw, the test light's useless for actually checking the glow plug itself. Uh, so you actually need an ohmmeter for that and a good multimeter will have an ohmmeter setting on it. Um, also, I think we've covered these crappy leads. Look, I've got these from, I don't know, J car or something like that, some electronic shop. Um, test them first before you actually use them. Make sure the um, they've got zero resistance between the two ends when you put them on. Otherwise, that's going to throw your readings out. I did have, uh, I didn't show it on camera. I was using some of these, and the readings were quite a few ohms higher than what they actually are because the resistance through that lead. So you have to be careful of that. Um, I think that's just about covers it guys, um, I don't think I can go into any much greater detail, you just got to remember every vehicle will be different, but as long as you've got a preheat, your light comes on the dash, um, the preheat continues on after you start it, um, everything should be honky dory, um, but if it doesn't then you're looking at electrical problems and you're going to have to start tracing back to your fuse box, fuse blown then you're going to have to try and find relays and if you've got a timer you're going to have to try and find out where that's hidden as well uh, so yeah you've got a little bit of a nightmare ahead of you if your preheat system isn't working um, luckily for me mine is because uh, I've tried to find all these gadgets uh, underneath there but uh, I eventually found them um, luckily I don't have to test them at this stage all right we'll see you in another video oh look there is one more thing I've just thought of um, if you've got a preheat that works, if you uh, tested your glow plugs and they have uh, a fair resistance, uh, you know, a little bit over, but not too much, and your vehicle still doesn't start, I'd remove a glow plug.
Okay, and have a look at the uh, very tip of it. It could have that much carbon buildup on it that the heat actually isn't getting through and warming up the combustion chamber like it should. Um, that's a very strong possibility. And I'll, I'll tell you, in my case, that was uh, the case because these glow plugs were replaced a year and a half ago and they tested fine and the vehicle was hard, harder to start than normal. It did start, normally after about five or six cranks, uh, it, it did start. Uh, when we pulled the glow plugs out, yeah, you, uh, there was just so much crap on the end of it, the uh, glow plug tip. Uh, so we put new ones in, obviously, and uh, it started uh, straight away. All right, catch up.